In this video, our goal is to make this Spark line chart more interactive so that we update it when the user taps on any one of these radio buttons for either selecting a different metric to show or selecting a different time scale. The way we'll go about doing this is to map the radio button selection to an enum which represents the metric or the time scale. So I want to create a new class called chart options. And this chart options KT file will encapsulate all the knowledge about the different ways we could render this chart, this Spark chart. And there's going to be two enums inside of this chart options class. The first will be for the metric being shown. And there are three possible metrics that we can show on the graph. One is negative, negative cases of coronavirus. One is positive cases of coronavirus. And then lastly is the number of deaths. The other enum we'll define here is the bottom row of radio buttons, which are the time period over which the chart should display data. We're going to call this enum class timescale. And this enum is going to have an associated integer, which represents how many days does this timescale represent. So I'm going to call this val num days, and this is going to be an integer. So there are three possible options in the bottom row of radio buttons. One is for one week of data, and the corresponding enum is seven days for that. Then we have one month, and we're going to assume that one month is always 30 days. And then finally is maximum, which means show the maximum amount of data possible. We don't know ahead of time the number of days associated with the maximum time. So we're going to instead put a special value, which is going to be negative one. The combination of these two enums, metric and time scale, cover all the possible ways that our chart, our Spark chart, could be rendering data. There's also a notion of our chart having a certain state. Our chart has to be displaying one of these metrics, and it has to be displaying data over exactly one of these three timescales. That state will live inside of the adapter for our chart. So inside of the adapter class, I'm going to define two variables here, one for the metric, and this is going to be by default showing the positive cases. And notice that this is a var, not a val, because we do expect that this metric will change over time as the user taps on one of those radio buttons in the top group. And there's one more variable, which is the number of days ago. And this is by default going to be the maximum time scale. Now that we've defined these two variables, our adapter is now aware of what it should be rendering in the Spark chart. So in the function get y, which re returns a float of the corresponding metric value at this position, at index, instead of always returning the positive cases of coronavirus, we should instead check the value of the metric variable. I'm going to use the when construct in Kotlin, and we'll return a different value depending on the metric. I'll say return when, and depending on the metric, we'll do something different. When the metric is negative, then we want to return the negative increase dot to float. When the metric is positive, we want to do something quite similar, except this should be positive increase. And then when the metric is death, we want to report the number of deaths on that particular day. And then later on, we're going to use days ago in another function that we override on the adapter. There's one more place back in main activity where we hard-coded in the assumption of always returning the positive number of coronavirus cases. So here as well, in this update info for date method, we want to again check the metric enum in our adapter and then return the corresponding metric. So in order to have access to the adapter inside of this method, instead of defining it locally here, I would like to make it a property. So I'm going to delete the val, and now Android Studio will show me this red light bulb and I can use Android Studio to create the property for me. So now we have this adapter, and right here, we want to do something quite similar. So val num cases should be, again, something which is based on the adapter dot the metric. And if the metric is negative, then we want to return the COVID data, which is a parameter passed in here. We want to display the negative increase attribute of this COVID data class. 
And then in the case of positive, we want to show positive increase. And then finally, in the case of death, we want to show the number of increases in the number of deaths. So instead of always placing this value in, we can instead show num cases. We haven't made any functional differences in the app yet because we haven't added any event listeners for when the radio buttons are changed. So all that logic for listening to changes in any of the UI elements, we're going to put all that in a function called setup event listeners. I'll call that method right here, setup event listeners. And we'll define this method inside of main activity. The reason I'm calling this method here is because we only want to make the UI interactive when there is actually data to show. So as soon as we get the success from our API call to get the national data, that's when we want to hook up the radio buttons and the ability to actually scrub on the graph. Before that, it doesn't make sense. So in setup event listeners, there's two things we want to do. First is we want to add a listener for the user scrubbing on the chart. And second, we'd like to respond to radio button selected events. I'll leave a to-do for the second item because we'll get to that later. In order to allow the user to scrub on the chart, which basically means hold down on the chart and drag their finger over it, the first thing we need to do is set the is scrub enabled attribute to be true. And then we need to set a scrub listener on the Spark view. And as you can see here, the parameter that we are provided in this set scrub listener is a value, which is a value corresponding to one data object in the chart. In particular, if we go back to the adapter, you can see that the item data that we get back is going to be the return value of this function get item. And we're returning back the COVID data element at that position. So going back into my activity, I'm going to call the parameter here item data. And then the job here is in the body of this function, which will be invoked for us, we want to update the UI with this information. As a sanity check, one thing we can do is just check if the item data is indeed COVID data, which it should be because that's the only thing we're returning, but this is kind of a safety check. Then we can call the method we already defined, update info for date with this item data. So we're going to be updating that bottom UI component to show the date and the metric at that date. Let's run this. So now if I hold down on the chart and I move along, you can see that I am able to have this vertical line show up. And as I move it along, you can see the values at the bottom get updated. So on April 18th, I'm able to see exactly the number of positive coronavirus cases nationwide. And this makes our application a lot more useful because we're giving the user an ability to drill down into specific days. The last thing we'll do before hooking up the event listener for radio button taps is go back into the COVID Spark adapter and make use of this days ago property. The idea of days ago is that we want to change the time scale of our graph to only show that amount of data. The way we'll do this is by overriding one more method in the Spark adapter class. It's called get data bounds. Super dot get data bounds, this invocation of the parent method, which already defines this, is going to return to us a rect f or a rectangle composed of float coordinates. So I'm going to capture that super value into a local variable called bounds. And the idea here is that this rectangle defined by bounds will dictate what exactly is shown in our Spark chart. If you wanted to shorten or expand the amount of data shown in the chart, all we need to do is update the left end of this bounds rectangle. So we can say bounds dot left is equal to instead of the whole data, which is count from basically invoking this function get count. So instead of showing the whole amount, we'll say count minus seven, which means chop off everything except the last seven days worth of data, the most recent seven days worth of data. And this needs to be a float. So we would have to call to float here. Then we can return these modified bounds. Of course, we don't always want to subtract seven from the count and only show the last seven elements of the list. Instead, we'd like to change it based on this days ago property. Instead of having seven here, we want to get the days ago variable, get the corresponding num days property out of that enum and turn that into a float. 
This will work in the case of looking at the last one week or one month of data because the corresponding value of num days will be seven or 30. However, when the max option is selected, instead of reducing the amount of data shown by subtracting from count, we would instead like to show all the data. So that's a special case where we'll say if days ago is not equal to timescale.max, only then do we want to reduce the amount of data shown. So if days ago is max scale, bounds will actually be unchanged, which is what we want. Now we're finished laying the groundwork for being able to respond to when the user taps on the radio buttons. We simply need to modify the metric or days ago enum inside of the adapter. Now we can go back into main activity and write the logic to respond to radio button selected events. So let me remove the to do because we're actually going to complete this item right now. There are two radio button groups that we're going to respond to. The first is the set of radio buttons on the bottom of the screen, which is for selecting the time. So radio group time selection. And we're going to set a on checked change listener. So this is going to invoke the body of this function whenever one of the radio buttons in that bottom group has been selected. This method that's gonna get invoked has two parameters, one which is group, which we don't care about. So I'm gonna change that name to be a underscore followed by a checked ID. And the checked ID is the ID of the radio button that was selected. So the only thing that really needs to happen here is we need to update the days ago property in our Spark adapter to be the corresponding value when one of the radio buttons is tapped on. So for example, if I tapped on the radio button for one week, I should set adapter.daysago to be timescale.week. So rather than hard coding it, of course, we should do this contingent upon the value of checked ID. So we'll use the when construct. I'll say when checked ID. And if the checked ID is r.id.radiobuttonweek, then we'll map that to timescale.week. If it's r.id.radiobuttonmonth, then we'll set the timescale to be month. And then otherwise, the timescale is max. Once we've updated the days ago, the only other thing we need to do is notify the adapter that the data, the underlying data has changed. So it, the adapter knows to re-render itself. The other radio button group is at the top of the screen for displaying a metric. So we'll do something quite similar. Radio group metric selection dot set on check change listener. We don't care about the group, but we do care about the checked ID. So I'm gonna do another when based on the checked ID. If the radio button is positive, then we want to update the display metric to be positive. So I'm going to actually delegate the work of updating the display metric into a method called update display metric. And I'll pass in positive here. Let's also do the same thing for the radio button negative. And then finally for death, radio button death. Let's define this method now. The only thing that needs to happen here is something quite similar. We're going to update the metric variable in the adapter to be the selected metric. And then we'll notify the adapter that the data set has changed. Let's try it. So by default, we're seeing the nationwide number of positive coronavirus cases over the maximum time scale. If I change the metric to be negative, you can see that we are seeing a different chart, and similarly with the number of deaths. I can also do the same thing for showing only a certain period of data. So one month, you can see that I'm only seeing that last segment, and then week, I only have seven data points being shown here. So that looks like it's working. In the next video, we'll make a few improvements to the UI when a radio button is selected, and we'll add in a spinner or a dropdown component at the top of the screen, which will allow the user to look at the data for a particular state. If you have any questions about what we've done so far, feel free to drop a comment and I'll help as much as I can. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.